Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, to talk just a bit about the evolution of my second favorite antenna, the vintage dipole. And this is how it evolves. I'm going to show you just a couple of diagrams here as to how it evolves. Imagine that you have your radio, your transceiver, an antenna tuner, and then you connect that tuner to a pair of wires both equally long such that the total span of wire is at least a half a wavelength. You don't really have any transmission line here. This tuner is right at the antenna feed point. This length of coaxial cable right here between the tuner and the radio can be of any length whatsoever. Um, normally you want your tuner in your station though so that this would be a very short length of coax but it would, might be problematic to get your wires directly at the tuner and have the tuner be right at the antenna feed point unless you live in a tree house or something like that maybe you could work it out then <laughs> or you live in the you know, the ranger tower, you know, a forest ranger tower, something like that. Maybe that'd work. But this is the primitive version of the vintage dipole, and I'm going to give you an idea of how that dipole, which is an open wire fed, center fed antenna, actually evolved. Now, this doesn't have to be exactly a half a wavelength, but for best results, it, it should be at least a half a wavelength. That means each leg should be at least a quarter of a wavelength long, but they should both be equally long so that the antenna is fed in the center. Now imagine, if you will, that you decide that uh, you can't put your antenna right at your station. You need to, your tuner to be at some distance from the antenna. Well, all you really need to do is run a couple of parallel wires down to your tuner, making sure, of course, that both sides of this whole assembly are exact mirror images of each other, and again, maintaining at least a half a wavelength of uh, distance from end to end of the radiating element of the antenna itself. Now, this feed line can get longer and longer and longer. What you actually have here now is a sort of a partially folded up version of that. It's just that, of course, this section will be shorter, but you can make it as long as you want. You can make it a random length. By random, I guess what we mean, when we talk about a random dipole or a random wire. We just mean that you pull some length out of the air. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's at least that minimum. Then it can be whatever you want because your tuner will always take care of any reactances that may appear at the feed point or the point where the feed line joins the radio. So you don't have to worry about the characteristic of this uh, characteristic impedance Z sub zero of this transmission line right here. You don't have to worry about it. It can be anything. X. It could generally, if you construct an open wire line, it'll be anywhere between about 300 and 600 ohms. The wider apart you space the uh, the conductors, the higher Z sub zero will be, and the bigger around you make the conductors, all other things being equal, the smaller Z sub zero will be. So in, for practical scenarios, it's going to end up between about 300 and 600 ohms, but you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the standing wave ratio on this uh, transmission line. You don't have to worry about how long this antenna really is. It's just that it works best if it's at least one half wavelength and again symmetrical. 
Well, that's all well and good, and that's a beautiful antenna if you can get the supports that you need. Uh, it's particularly effective on bands such as 1.8, 3.5, 5, 5, and 7 megahertz. Those are the bands where I would most like to have such an antenna, but they, it's also those are the bands that it's going to be the biggest. A half wavelength on 1.8 megahertz, for example, electrically, is about 130 135 feet, something along those lines. It's a pretty good span of wire. 3.5 megahertz, roughly 66 feet at 5 megahertz. You know, I haven't calculated that ever. I've never uh, used that a group of channels. 7 megahertz, about 33 feet. But you can get an idea what it would be, probably around 50 feet, something like that. Uh, if you can make it longer, that's fine. It will affect the directional properties, but you don't really worry much about that either. The idea is to get that radiating element to put a signal into space. That's the only thing you're really interested in with an antenna like this. And, if, and that is, of course, the purpose of an antenna. And uh, if you can have all sorts of other aesthetic and theoretical beauties in your antenna, but if it doesn't do the best possible job of putting your signal into space, then it's sort of like uh, having a whole bunch of dental treatments and still having a mouth full of rotten teeth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it's the results that matter, and the most important thing to focus on in the, in the case of an antenna is to get that bloody radiator to put its signal into the ether. But my favorite antenna of all, I said this was my, f my second favorite, my favorite is one that I have described in other videos and will probably describe again and show you sometime. The Kite Zep. Stan Jibalisco, proprietor and operator of W1GV, saying 73 and so long for now.